Hello, I'm Essie, the homeless woman. And I made a video yesterday about anyone can become homeless. And in the video, I was talking about how people make it hard for the homeless. Society makes it hard for homeless people. And someone asked me, how is it that people make it hard for the homeless? Like, I guess he wanted me to elaborate on it. And I did in the comment section. But I thought today that would be a nice video to make. How is it that people make it hard for the homeless? And society too. Well, they don't make it easy to be homeless. They make it very hard um, that you're discriminated against, just like black people are discriminated against, or Mexicans may be discriminated against. You know, homeless people are discriminated against. Um, some of the ways that I have been discriminated against is by simply wanting to use the restroom. I have never been a dirty homeless person. Um, I have always kept myself looking decent, um, always hair combed. Um, so if you saw me, you wouldn't think that I was homeless. The only time people knew that I was homeless if is by word of mouth, like someone else know my situation and then they would tell other people and it would spread because I wouldn't would freely willy tell people that I was homeless because of that, because people would treat me different. I used to see people, people used to talk to me normally before they knew I was homeless. They would hold a conversation with me. I would talk to them. Um, they never knew. And then one day someone tells them and all of a sudden now, they don't want to talk to me anymore they just stand off and stare at me like and I be thinking to myself I held the conversation with you before you knew I was homeless so now that you know I'm homeless what I can't hold the same conversation with you anymore now you just stands off at a distance and stare at me It's like, um, so back to the restroom thing. So people didn't know I was homeless, but they, by word of mouth. So when they found out I was homeless, I was treated differently. Even with trying to use the restroom at gas stations and stuff. So I have had some people that work at gas stations to be nice to me. Some people that work at the same gas station to be mean to me because they found out I live in my car. So now, no, you can't use the restroom. I remember one night I was sitting in my car and I had to go to the restroom really bad. And I've been having problems with two of these gas stations that I was parked nearby, where I sleep. And having problems with trying to use the restroom because there were certain people there working there that didn't want me to use the restroom. And I remember being so frustrated like why can't i just use the restroom i never messed up the restroom i know there's some homeless people that make it hard for other homeless people just like some people that live in houses make it hard for other people that live in houses but some homeless people go into the restrooms and they make a mess but when that happens all homeless people get under that same umbrella so just because i'm homeless they think i'm going to I never go into the restrooms and make a mess. Never. But I was put under that same umbrella. You're homeless. No, you can't use the restroom. You know, so I remember one night sitting in my car needing to go to the restroom. And I didn't have much gas. I didn't think that I could drive somewhere where there was a 24-hour business where I could use the restroom. So I just remember being so frustrated and then the Heavenly Father made me think of a business that was open late. 
where I could go in and not really be detected. So I was like, oh yes. So it, it was it was not far at all. So I went there, I used the restroom, and I was like, I'm so glad that the Heavenly Father popped this business in my head. So um I had a dream and I had shared this in another video where when it was hard for me to do something I would call on Yahweh and he would make a way for me he would make another way for me or he would give me the strength to overcome whatever I was going through so when I woke up from that dream I had decided that whenever someone tell me no I will find another way and that I would not just accept that no and just give up but that I would always find another way and that I would call on the Heavenly Father and he would make a way for me and he has ever since I realized you know that he gave me that dream so it's it's when it comes to like cashing a check like if someone send you a check um when you go to cash the check they want something with an address on it i remember going to walmart and having a hard time trying i think my mother has sent me some money through walmart walmart has this where you can send money and i went in there to try to get the money and they told me i needed something with an address on it and i'm thinking to myself i'm showing you my id with my address well no i had a p.o box yeah i'm showing you my id so you know it's me i don't have an address on my id but i have a p.o box on my id but it's me and this person I mean, it wasn't her fault. It wasn't her fault. It was um, the rule that in order to get money that someone has sent you through Walmart, Walmart to Walmart, I had to have something with an uh, address on it. It just didn't make sense to me. I'm showing you an ID with my name on it. It may not have an address. It have a P.O. box, but it's me. If you need to see another card or something with my name on it, I can supply you that. But these people wouldn't even give me the money that was sent to me until I show something with an address on it. I thought I was so frustrated. And then I remembered I had something with an address on it. So... I went back to my car, got it, brought it back in, and I told them, I said, this is discrimination. She said, no, it's not. But she didn't understand what I was talking about. This is homeless discrimination. Why do I have to have something with an address on it? If I'm showing you an ID with my name on it, and I can show you something else with my name on it, another card, why do I have to have a letter with an address on it that's discrimination against the homeless that's making it hard for homeless people when you when they can't do accept money do simple things because I got to have an address that's making it so that you have to go out and work and slave to pay a rich person to rent their property so you can have an address so things can be easier for you, but you're slaving to pay all this rent. And that's what I'm talking about, how society makes it hard for the homeless. Another way is the police. They use the police against the homeless. It's already hard enough. Imagine some things that people have been through to become homeless. And I'm not talking about substance abuse. 
I'm not talking about that because to me, I think those people, their problem is substance abuse. That's their number one problem. And that's what caused them to become homeless. But their problem is substance abuse. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about people that's not on drugs that become homeless because of whatever you know reason maybe their house burned down maybe natural disaster maybe they just tired of life maybe they're just tired of working every day day in day out not having no help doing it all by themselves and maybe they're going through things in their life that stressed them out maybe caused them to go through depression and they just gave up i'm talking about homeless people like that and who knows i mean people have i met one lady she was homeless her and her husband they had a house fire they were successful her and her husband they had a house fire that burnt down their house and like three of their kids were in the house and they died i think they had like five kids five or six but three of them passed away in the house with the fire so imagine what that does to a person you know you're successful your house burns down and three of your kids well you know what that mentally does to you i can imagine i don't have any kids but i can imagine um having kids and loving my kids and then having my house burned down and three of my kids in the house they became homeless that could cause you to go through a mental problem mental depression whatever it costs you to go through and how can you cope how can you continue to go on in life because life doesn't stop it don't stop I don't, it don't care about who who passes away your kids your parents and you don't care about who passes away life continue to go on but you, yo, it feel like your whole world has come to an end. But you have to continue on like you're a robot. So it's like you get to the point where you like you can't do it anymore, and you stop, and then you become homeless. And now society has set it up that they're against the homeless. They make it hard for the homeless. The police come after you and press and. And, and persecute you or try to find a way tell you you can't be here you, they don't care they don't some of them do care but majority of the police don't care about the homeless just get out of here we don't want you here move get up go somewhere else they talk to you horrible they talk to you like you don't even have a heart they have no respect for the homeless they don't care what you have been through in life. So imagine having to go through this with the police. I told you before I started talking back to the police that I did not say anything to them for the first several years. I didn't say anything to them. They were so disrespectful to me. Till I got fed up and I started talking back to them. And when I started talking back to them, uh, and I called 911 on one of them. Now I'm being, now they want to uh, investigate me 24 7 to try to lock me up in prison. They don't care about what you're going through, they don't care about you being homeless. It's hard being homeless. And then, like I said, when you're homeless, I never been a prostitute, I never sold drugs. I never did drugs. My hands have never touched drugs. Um, I don't know nothing about no drugs. Um, let me see. What else? Stealing. Don't steal. Don't vandalize. And whatever else they say homeless people do. I've been looked at as the most shadiest person in my entire life simply because I have the title homeless. I didn't, I didn't do any of those things. But just because I have the homeless title, I've been looked at as all those things. 
and then been treated as such. I went in um, when I started crocheting. Um, well, I've always been crocheting, but when I started selling my crochet, and this woman, she helped me to get in a boutique, not a boutique, an antique store. I had a little space in the antique store with this lady. And this lady had these little figurines. And I remember her making a comment to me, yeah, your stuff may come up stolen because you have small stuff. And I just looked at her. And guess whose stuff came up stolen? Hers. Her figurines came up stolen. They were like antiques and they were worth a certain amount of money. And they came up stolen. Who who you think they thought stole her, stole her figurines? I remember she brought me some food one day at Starbucks. And she said, God knows who stole my figurines. And she looked at me when she said it. And I said, yeah, he sure does. He knows. But I knew that she thought I stole her figurines. Like, why would I steal from someone that's helping me? Why would I steal from someone that's helping me? Like, I went to her mother's house. Her mother has passed away now. I went to her mother's house one day. She drove us there, drove me there. Her mother fed me. Her mother, she had a whole bunch of buttons and stuff. And I would do my crochet and I would use buttons. And so she went through her buttons and she gave me buttons. We had hot, hot chocolate. You know, we had a good time. Just three women. Um, after I left there... Her mother contacted her daughter and said that, well, I don't know exactly what was said, but when it came back to me, she felt that I had vandalized her antique table. It was uh, scratches under her antique table. Um, on top of the table, she had a, a dolly and a, a big heavy plant on top of it. And I sat at that table and ate. And she felt that I had vandalized the table. Like, why would you invite me to your house and you feed me and you give me buttons to for my craft and I pay you back by vandalizing your antique table? Like, they think that homeless people have mental problems. So, to me, because that's what you would have to be like, a, a, have a, some type of mental problem or just be plain evil to pay somebody back that has helped you by vandalizing something of theirs. And this is the stuff I had to go through all the time. I when when something come up missing or vandalized, it was I was automatically looked at because I'm the homeless one. I used to get in my car and cry. This was before I started speaking up for myself. I used to get in my car and cry because people were so disrespectful to me. Because a lot of people don't have respect for homeless people, so they talk down to homeless people. And I used to get in my car and cry a lot. Cry myself to sleep. Literally. Until I started speaking up and I had to pray to get my voice back because it seemed like when I became homeless like my voice just left <laughs> like I couldn't defend myself so I had to pray to get for my voice back and so Yahweh gave me my voice back and I started speaking up for myself and when I started speaking up for myself then I became public enemy number one so people love you when they letting you walk all over them when you are letting them walk all over you, they love you then. But when you started speaking up for yourself, now everybody hates you. But I stopped crying myself to sleep at night. I started feeling good about myself. So I, I would prefer you hate me and I get a good peaceful night's sleep. 
and feel good about myself than to let myself be a door a, a doormat for you to walk all over and say whatever you want and I cry myself to sleep at night. So society makes it hard for the homeless. Hard to be homeless. People just stare. Ugh. They just stare at you. Like you're not normal because you're homeless. It's so many people becoming homeless now. So you know I've been homeless for over 12 years. I have never seen so many homeless people now. Like it's real. They're really getting in my way now. Because... When I go to the gym, sometime they're in the big shower. I like the big shower because it has a bench in there. When I go to the gym, it's like, uh, I hope ain't nobody in the big shower, you know? That's how many homeless people it is now. It's a lot. Like, when I come to my storage unit, I'm in my storage unit right now. And my storage unit has, like, four restrooms. And two of them are by my our, um, units. And so, when I come here, I'm like... A lot of times there's somebody in the restroom I'm like dang it's too many homeless people around here now it's a lot of people living in their cars it's a lot I have never seen it like this before and I'm sure there's gonna be more and more homeless people coming out here it's just people need to change the way they treat homeless people I was I was saying in the comment that I'm treated better now because I work and I have a newer a new vehicle. So people look at the vehicle. I I don't live in my van, so I don't have a lot of stuff in my van. My windows are not covered in my van. I still have my my O3 Camry that I've been living in ever since I've been homeless so I sleep in my Camry and I have those windows covered in there and I have clothes in there so I don't have to bring that into my van so I'm treated with respect now because I don't look homeless I don't have a, a vehicle filled with a lot of stuff driving around with it so I'm treated better now because of the vehicle I'm like in this society why do you treat people better because of material possessions like why can't I be treated better because I'm a human I'm a living soul why can't just for me myself why can't I be treated better why do you have to look at my vehicle to treat me better like I go to Cars Jr. use the restroom a lot especially when I'm doing Uber I might stop there use the restroom now the manager there I was at one time I was going there a lot and she started noticing me and I felt that she wanted to say something to me because she saw me coming into uh, coming in there a lot to use the restroom and so one day when I came out of Cars Jr. she came out behind me and she saw the vehicle that I got into which was my very first minivan it was brand new when I bought it and she saw me get in that brand new van and she never said anything to me but if she had saw me got into my Camry where my windows are covered it's an older car you could tell I live in it if she had saw me got into that I bet you she would have told me I can't come in there to use the restroom anymore but because she saw me get into a brand new minivan, she never said anything to me. Why do life have to be like that? Like, I have to use the restroom just like anybody else have to use the restroom. This is what I don't like about society. When you go into the restroom after I come in, after I leave out, I didn't leave it in a mess. So what's the big deal? And I'm sure that's more I can't even think of. Oh, another one. People try to hurt homeless people. I don't know how many times somebody has come to my car 
to try to hurt me. Anyway, I'll talk to you guys um, another day. I have to clean my van and get ready and do Uber. Today is Sunday and it's almost 4 p.m. But I'm going to get started late today, probably 5. I probably start doing Uber at 5. Sundays is, is not that busy around here. It gets busy like later in, in the into the night. I don't know why. But so I'm just going to take my time, clean my van a little bit. And then I'll start doing Uber. Talk to you later. Have a good day.